Now, fundamental correlation. And we're focusing on the PPI and the CPI. Okay, now the PPI, which is the producer price index, and the CPI, which is the consumer price index, are correlated. And as a result, a better than expected PPI data will affect market sentiments towards a better than expected CPI data. So these two fundamental announcements are correlated. And this is because the PPI, the producer price index, relates to the cost producers pay to manufacture goods and services, while the CPI relates to how much these goods and services cost consumers. So if producers are paying more to manufacture goods and services, they will in turn charge more and consumers will have to pay more for those goods and services. So you can see how the PPI and the CPI has a direct correlation. Okay, so whenever producers have to pay more, they will charge the consumers more and the PPI data is usually released before the CPI data. So we can use the PPI data to give us an idea of what to expect for the CPI. And this is a technique used by fundamental traders to make money trading Forex. And I'm going to show you an example of this on the economic calendar. Okay, so this is the economic calendar. This is the Forex factory economic calendar. And we're just going to look at the correlation between PPI and CPI. Here you can see we have bad PPI data. We have PPI data coming out worse than expected. Okay, hence the red. Whenever news comes out better than expected, we have green. Whenever it comes out worse than expected, we have red. Okay, so you can see 0 0.7, we're getting 0 0.8 we're getting minus 0.2. So we have bad PPI data for this month of November. Now let's look at the CPI data, which in this case comes out the next day. We can see CPI data worse than expected. We were projecting 2.2, we got 2.1. But what's also important is the fact that previously we had 2.2 for the previous month, and now we have a decrease to 2.1. So this is bad for the CPI. Also here, we missed estimate. They were projecting 0.2 and we got 0.1. So this is bad, but this is worse because we got worse than the previous month. Now let's look at another example. Now in this case, let's see. In this case, we have better than expected PPI data, okay? Here we can see the CPI data. Now. Even though this is red, look at the previous month. Previous month was 2.1 and we got 2.1. So this is better than the one we had for November, which is a previous example I just showed because in that example, we had a decrease from the previous month and the current month. In this case, the previous and the current is equal. So this is not as bad. Now look at this example here. Here, the previous was 1.6, the projected was 1.7, and we're bang in line with the projection, okay? So this is good, this is okay, this is not as great, but this is okay. And, and this is what I mean when I say the PPI can give us an understanding of what to expect for the CPI. We got good PPI data here, so we weren't expecting a very bad CPI data, okay? So the CPI data which we got here was okay. Previous month we had decrease in CPI, see? We have here in the previous column 2.2 and then we got a 2.1. And here, even though we have bang in line, we were less than projected. So this is an example of how we can use PPI to help us to predict CPI. And in this example, I'm using fxtreat.com economic calendar.